uh, do the yeah, share. And there like, we are. Up anyway. We are live. All right, nice let's share this. Man. Let's share this piece up in here. I'm looking for something to share, man. I'm, I'm waiting to share it. I'm waiting to share it. it. It usually takes just a second. Well, hi, everybody. While we're doing our usual wait for it to load up and share. Yeah, if y'all been around a minute, you know how we do. You, you know, know how we, we take a minute wait. to we take a minute to Well we gotta we gotta wait on the good yeah. folks to show up, you know. Not yeah. everybody can be Johnny on the spot, right? <clears throat> nah, we gotta let time. you know, let some you know, people fashionably late. We gotta let some folks share, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, on that note, if you're just joining us, please do share. Hit like, hit share, man. We we're gonna get into some stuff today. Man and uh we you know how we do. Mm, mm. Yeah, that's 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 how we do, man. Get get your bucket. It's gonna get deep. <clears throat> That's how we do, man. That's just how we do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this in a couple places, man. Do it. Share it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. Caring. That's right. See, we're already learning something today, kids. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. So if you're watching this, hit like, hit share, man. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe. Hit I don't know whatever all that kind of stuff you do on. On YouTube, you know what I'm saying? You know how they do on the tube, mm. everywhere else on Facebook, blah, 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 right, blah, blah. That's enough sharing for me. Yeah. What do you think, man? Are we shared? Are we shared up? I, I think we're shared out now. I think we're I'm shared out. I'm going to come over here to comments. Hey, if you're watching this, let us know you're watching yeah. this. Put your name down in the comments and all that kind of stuff. Because speaking of secret, let us know who you are. I am Kirk M. Samuels. And I am Jason <laughs> B. Kendrick. That's right. And we are the mad men of masculinity, baby. We're just real men having real conversations for you. And I'm telling for you what, you. today, <laughs> oh yeah. man, we, we're getting into it today. Yeah, 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 I think so. First of all, let, let's back up a little bit. Back it up. Are you, are we doing No Shave November or what? Um, I've already, I've been doing since like the summer, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing No Shave 2020. Right. Uh, yeah, we're five days in. I kind of I realized the other day, like I haven't shaved like this week. I think I might grow a little shadow or oh, something. Boy. You know, I, I don't think about I don't think I'm gonna go the whole month. I think, oh, I'm, yeah, I think yeah. I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm gonna keep it neat. But no, 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 no. But I think I might I might I might hold on to a shadow. Well, see, I, might, I mean, you've already you've already got your boundaries set up. You know where you're gonna boundaries. stop. I mean, you know where your boundaries exactly. are in your facial area. That's that's important, man. That's important. So something I wanted to run by you here tonight, man. And you know, we won't take. Too long to 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 uh, to take off from the runway, uh, but uh, I was having a conversation yesterday. I think it was uh, with somebody, and and uh, and the conversation was about a. It was kind of like a negative friend that they had over, uh, a friend that they had over. But that friend just kind of had like some negative juju, just yeah. just some, you know negative vibes. Just you know, we all know we got everybody got like that that friend and. Uh, and you know I, the the whole thought just came up, man. Of like, you know, especially these days, man, we got to be vigilant about guarding our space and yeah. protecting the space that we're in and the space that's around us and and what that looks like and all that kind of stuff, man. And I'm like, you know, in a whole lot of different ways, man, we got to be vigilant about yeah. our space. Yeah, I mean, shoot, we've talked about I'm not nice guy syndrome. I don't, I'm team million times already, but that's a huge thing. Like being yeah. able to set boundaries, healthy boundaries, especially with unhealthy people, because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry, folks, people don't walk around aware that they're unhealthy. <laughs> mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's up to us to go, all right, um, I love you. You're my friend. You're playing Eeyore right now or whatever, mm-hmm. like, oh, what was me victim? And you're bringing the vibe down. I can't have that in my space right now. I mean, mm-hmm. shoot. You look at somebody like Oprah, she's like famous for that. Like, don't mm-hmm. bring none of that stuff in here. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that, yeah, I mean, gotta be. And, but how does that look, though? I mean, that's the thing. I know that's what a lot of people probably think right now. Like, yeah. well, how do I do that without be, sounding like a, uh, you know, an ass or whatever? Well, I think, to, you know, I think to back up on that just, just a minute, I mean, I think, um, you know, a lot of times you have people that, that might be around you that might be in your life, in your circle that is going through something. And if somebody's going through something and, you know, I think sometimes there may be a, 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 an opportunity to kind of be there for them. I mean, you don't you don't want to just throw up the deuces on everybody in your life that, you know, that might need you kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> you know, but but then at the same time, I think we do have a personal obligation to be aware of like what's going on in my right. I mean, a lot of people, man, I, I got enough stuff going on. Like, I don't need nobody else's stuff. I don't need the world's stuff. 
you know, and I, you know, but just in terms of just, you know, people in general, I think sometimes, you know, we, we just have to be aware of what, you know, not only places that we go, but also, you know, places that come to us, people that come to us and what they bring. And if, you know, if, if, somebody especially is in like a repeated pattern man i think you know i think that's something if nothing else i think it begins with awareness yeah. it begins with awareness of just like man i gotta i gotta be careful of just my stuff man my space well that brings up a great point because i mean we have been taught especially in western western culture that selfishness <laughs> is a bad thing like don't be selfish however mm -hmm. if you really get down to the root of it selfishness is really sense of self yeah. and if you're not setting healthy boundaries, then you're teaching people how to treat you. And those people that may be in that cycle, like you're talking about, if we don't set healthy boundaries with them for our own health, right. how are they even going to learn that they're in an unhealthy cycle? I mean, if right. everybody's just giving them kid gloves and like, oh, right. just coddle them because they're in a bad space, we're not doing them any favors either. <laughs> right. So now, we have healthy boundaries. If I'm in a if I'm in a, a serving mode space, like you know, say for example, if I'm working with a guy or 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 a couple or whomever, if I'm working with somebody, then I'm in that mode, I'm in that zone, I'm in that space, and that's I'm there to help carry that load or help carry that burden. I'm there to to be that for them. And then there's times when okay, I need my cup full, mm -hmm. and needing my cup full means that sometimes I got to, you know, I, I got to be aware of when it's recharge time, when it's time to reset the clock, when it's time to, you know, to, um, to, to make sure that I have something to offer when it's time for me to offer something. Yeah. And, and so to, yeah, to a degree on the surface, it, it might look like being selfish. It might look like, you know, I'm all about me. And in actuality, you know, if I'm trying to fill my cup, it's because I'm the kind of person that pours out of my cup constantly. And so in order to do that effectively, I got to make sure I got something in there to pour out. Yeah. I mean, healthy boundaries really goes to even the, the old airplane analogy. You put on your oxygen mask first before you help your kids out or whatever. And yeah. especially for those like you and me and a lot of the folks that watch this, you know, if you're a coach or a therapist or a counselor, you're given all day long. So if you don't mm -hmm. have healthy boundaries, like this mm -hmm. is my job versus this is my private time where I recharge mm -hmm. myself. If you don't actually take that conscious effort to recharge yourself and to fill mm -hmm. your cup up, then you're given from an empty vessel. Mm -hmm. And so that's mm -hmm. part of that understanding the 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 yin and yang of, of the give and the give and take of being a supportive person or being mm -hmm. someone who helps others. If mm -hmm. you don't fill your cup up, if you don't put your mask on first, you got nothing to give folks, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And if there's somebody who's continually, and that's the thing, here's what really happens. When you start to set, set healthy boundaries, don't expect it to be a walk in the park. Because mm -hmm. what we tend to do as nice folks, especially as nice guys in this country, we kind of train people that we'll just put up with whatever and they've got a they've got all the energy they can drain from us on tap. Mm -hmm. And so when we start to cut that off, those people are going to react. They're going to get upset. Yeah. That's a good indication of who are your real friends and not because your real friends will be like, oh, yeah, OK, yeah. I see what you're what you're about and I support that. Those ones that are just like the, the energy vampires, or whatever you want to call them out there, they're going to be upset because now their free lunch is off the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're a parent, mm -hmm. if you're um, in a relationship, um, if you are, you know, if you have siblings or family or if you maybe are active in your community and uh, and all those kinds of things, then then you are a person that 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 needs to have something to offer to other people. And, um, <clears throat> and in those in those settings and in those modes, if you're a parent, you know, in order to parent better, you got to have something to offer your kids. I mean, in order again, same thing with relationships. The catchy part is the catch twenty two part is is what it, what happens when I'm a parent and I need to have something to pour out to give to my kids, but at the same time, you know. I'm just speaking metaphorically, and this is just the first example that come to mind because I got my two daughters over my head and it's just thoughts have nothing to do with them. Just an example. I can come up with five different examples of the same exact thing. But anyhow, point being, how do you balance um, how do you balance uh, people, you know, the, the people that you pour out to versus the people that that sometimes sometimes can be the ones that that can kind of drain you sometimes. And what do I do with that? Um, and I think you, you have to have wisdom 
to just know the difference. You have to have wisdom to know, okay, am I being a parent? Okay, or, or maybe sometimes I need to take a break. Maybe sometimes I need to go for a walk. Maybe sometimes I need to get away from the folk that I'm, you know, serving in life in, in some kind of capacity, whatever that yeah. looks like. I mean, I mean, that's a great point with parents, but even in relationships and Absolutely. whether it's parent and child or just in your intimate relationships, mm -hmm. if we don't have healthy boundaries or, or we're not, you know, we talk about this a lot, like guys, you need to have guy friends, ladies, you need to have girlfriends. Mm -hmm. Like we got to get away from this idea that you're my everything and I'm your everything and that we've mm -hmm. got it. Cause what ends up happening is, yeah, that's, that's great in the beginning mm -hmm. because you're both feeding this energy into that, that third entity, which is the relationship. And but mm -hmm. then after a while, if your cups are empty and then you drain the relationship energy, then you're just feeding off each other. Mm -hmm. And so it's understanding just basic energy dynamics of relating. And especially for parents with your kids, if you don't teach them that you need to take a break, that you need mm -hmm. to recharge your batteries and, and teach them that that's a normal thing and that's okay. They're just going to drain you. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're mm -hmm. just going to keep taking. So it's, it's that healthy, this is how we deal with humans and this is how we are as human beings. We only have mm -hmm. so much to give and we all need mm -hmm. a break. Mm -hmm. We need to go, with our guy friends and recharge ladies need to go with their girlfriends and recharge so that we can come back and mm -hmm. um come back with a full cup so that we yeah. can give i mean it's even like the what was that study we were talking about before the, the you know we have an eight hour or ten hour work day but after four hours most of most of our creativity is out the window mm -hmm. and it's just mm -hmm. understanding that okay i'm gonna give you four hours of creativity but the rest of the day might not be so good <laughs> might not might not be as creative <laughs> Right, right, right. And, you know, Janine says adult adult timeout is a good alternative for me. I right. Sometimes maybe it comes, you know, thank you for that, Janine, by the way. Um, maybe it's sometimes it's as simple as just taking a walk. Like, you know what, I'm just going to go out and take me a walk with, you know, nobody or no thing and just literally get outside of the walls and, uh, and, and, and get some space. Yeah, if you call it adult timeout or if you call it just some space or some time or something, um, you know, just something as simple as it doesn't have to be anything crazy, but just, just some space. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that me time thing. Like, you know, if, if your kids are having a temper tantrum, like, oh, it sounds like you need some me time in your room. I'm having a hard day. I need some me yeah. time over here uh, in the yard or, or wherever. <clears throat> Understanding that me time is necessary. We can only give so much. And if you right. get to that empty cup space, then you're not, you are doing what you can for your people. Mm -hmm. You're not really giving from that full cup space, which is, mm -hmm. which is different. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I see a lot of mothers doing it, especially nowadays. I mean, superwoman syndrome, like they're the mother, the business owner, the caretaker, the cook, the, you know, housekeeper, all these things. And, and because of that, that masculine energy in their system, they're, they're not, they're afraid to ask for help. You know, when do they take a break? When do, when, mm -hmm. you know, and, and my, most of them, I mean, I know we've talked to a, a several ladies like that. Like, most of them don't feel like they can, ask for mm -hmm. support or ask that they can take a break because who else mm -hmm. is going to you know help out mm -hmm. but that's something that's like we've yeah. got to make those healthy boundaries because of if we don't then that unhealthy energy that negative low energy is going to come in if we're not yeah. being conscious like no yeah. this is my space and it is a, it is a fine line between you know between taking some time for yourself and filling your cup um it's a fine line between that and, and just being selfish and just being, you know, self-centered. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had someone a few years ago just kind of dropped a wisdom bomb on me, you know, when, when, uh, when, you know, I was in a conference and, and she said, you know, you got your, when you fill your cup and your cup overflows, then you end up giving out of your saucer, not out of your cup. And when you give out of your saucer, that is abundance. And so it's better to give out of abundance because when you give out of your cup, you're taken away from yourself as opposed to giving from what you created or, or produced uh, an abundance of. And so that's kind of a, that was a paradigm shift for me of like, man, you know, so maybe sometimes I do need to stop and get myself an ice cream cone, or maybe I do need to go sit in a park by myself and just have a, a tea or something like that or whatever. You know, maybe I do need to to uh, to love on myself, love on myself and just, you know, maybe I do need that. And, it, it, you know, it, and we can feel guilty by that. But but maybe there's some truth to that. Well, I mean, and there, yeah, to that point, how far is too far? And when do you cross the line? I mean, we're human beings, especially if you're a giver. You're that person that, that that's always given to your family mm -hmm. and your relationships. Mm -hmm. When you finally make, decide to make this change and then start 
drawing healthy boundaries and stuff, you may go over the line. You mm-hmm. may get into that self-centered, like, no, no, no. And you get too used to saying no because it, you've never said no before. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. That's how you learn. And it's just how quickly do you realize, mm-hmm. okay, that, that that is self-centered versus, you know, being yeah. um, in self-care. Yeah. And so, I mean, you may do that and just expect it. We're, we're yeah. human beings. We're always learning. We're always growing. We don't, yeah. we never get it right. We never get it wrong. We're just always evolving. And I think that burden, actually, I think it's, uh, I mean, I can see how it, it, I'm sure it does, obviously, but I can almost see how it exists on both sides in terms of men and women. I think women end up being a lot of doers and just kind of doing this and I do this, I do this for this person, I do this for this person, and I I do, 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 and then they end up feeling like doo-doo. Um, and so, you know, women can quite often be doers and they can get spread thin with all of the stuff that they're doing. Um, especially like you said, in all the roles that they have and, and that sort of stuff. And, and so, so I think women might struggle with that and, and maybe it'd be beneficial for guys to recognize, um, if there's a woman in your life, how much she's doing and, you know, either, you know, allow space for her to have some downtime or, or maybe even, you know, encourage or push her to have some downtime to get away and to do some stuff for herself and, you know, whether that's just sending her off to, you know, uh, a moment or a day or a night or whatever she needs to get some space. And so I can see how that 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 rests on the on the female side of things. And then on the male side of things, you know, I think we tend to, you know, the, the masculine burden is silent. It's really quiet. You know, the masculine burden is quiet and it is in the B side of things. And and, you know, I think that burden that we carry you know, exist in the quiet times. When I say quiet times, I'm talking about when when we're sitting on the couch and when we're just feeling, or when we're laying in bed at night and we're just feeling, not even just necessarily all the stuff I got to do, but just the the silent things that I am, like a pillar in a building. Yeah. Like it's quiet, but man, it's holding up a whole lot of stuff just by being there. Yeah, I mean, and we've talked about it before and that really reminded me of that as an awake man, somebody who understands that we need that masculine feminine dynamic, we need those polarities to create that intimacy and that sexual attraction. When your woman comes home and she's been in the doing this all day, if mm-hmm. you can help her transition into the beingness and mm-hmm. by you know doing a little. And I think that's the thing is if we can step up and, and take on each of those roles to help get back into that self-care, to help recharge ourselves, mm-hmm. we can help our women be more, more in the beingness so they can recharge by mm-hmm. getting into our doing this to help them support them and then vice versa. The, our, our ladies can you know be more in the beingness and know that that's what we need, that we yeah. need to get into our beingness. And and, <laughs> and and like you were saying, you lay in bed at night, not necessarily think about what you got to do the next day, but processing the day that you just went through. Yeah. Because I mean, it's getting better. It's still more prevalent than not that we're not allowed to emote. We're not allowed to, to, you know, feel. So we got to step it down. So then there's that quiet time. I know when I used to get off work, uh, one of my last girlfriends and I would come home and like sit on the porch for a half hour Mm -hmm. just to kind of decompress so that I can Mm -hmm. make that transition from work to home. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of that point of understanding how we, as men and women Mm -hmm. need to process our days and how we can support each other because it is very beneficial both sides and knowing that ladies if your guy goes out with his guy friends that's actually a benefit to you because he's Mm -hmm. gonna come back more in his masculine Mm -hmm. he's gonna come back more as your man just like Mm -hmm. guys if your lady goes out with her girlfriends that's a good thing she doesn't get more in her feminine get more into that 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 young attractive feminine full-bodied woman that you fell in love with so we you know stop having the the arguments. Oh, we got to be here and don't do this and don't do that. You know this is part of our self care and but especially in relationships, part of that how we help each other be in self care. Did we? Did you freeze up on me? We're having some technical difficulties with Kirk today. He's he's having bandwidth issues. But as far as us as men, I know this is a the mad men and masculine, and we, we mainly focus on men's issues because we're two men talking about men's issues. However, ladies, I mean, you are the majority of our, our audience because for most of you, you're, we want to understand the challenges and the issues that men are going through. And this is one of those as well. We sometimes feel at a loss how to support you. And if you're one of those that may not have a health, you know, healthy set of boundaries, helping your man to, or even giving him a to-do to help you set those boundaries or to be that 
go between or even that mediator to help you set those boundaries with the kids or the rest of the family or whoever that's something that we can come together as you know a couple or a you know team to work on and it's about the intimacy it's about the connection and the talking it's about the communication and so if you're in relationship with a man or you know if you guys if you're in a relationship with a woman and you're struggling with the intimacy if you're struggling with the communication or setting those boundaries to have healthy self-care the first thing to start with is to understand healthy communication and and to get to that place of vulnerability, which I know for guys is a lot harder sometimes. And ladies, it's it's can be hard for you to hear when your man is being vulnerable. However, it's uh, the necessary piece to create those healthy relationships where you can support each other in healthy self-care, where you can support each other and have those healthy relationships because it's it's a it's a team effort. The, the family cannot do it all on its own. So healthy boundaries and, and releasing those toxic people is almost like step number one. And, and enrolling your partner into doing that with you is a huge, it's a huge piece for both of you because it shows each of you what each of you needs. Like as if you're not even aware as a guy, what you need, if you know, what being this you need or what you need to recharge then this is something to take on to learn. And ladies, if you don't know what your man is or if you don't even know what you need for healthy self-care, this is something that should be a priority because like Kirk was saying, you want to give from the saucer, not from the cup. You want to give from the abundance of your energy, the abundance of your beingness, not from the, the lack thereof. So we'll see if Kirk gets back on here, but uh, this has been our normal Mad Men of Masculinity with our fun quirks and issues and things like that. However, this one has really been kind of to the forefront of both Kirk's and I lives because as men working on ourselves, we do come across this quite a lot. And as as coaches and you know, guys who work with others, we have to draw those healthy boundaries so that we can be fully present so that we can give from our fullness. So it's it's something that we're practicing daily and, and it's something that is pretty prevalent for, for both of us right now. So that's one of the reasons we brought this up. So if, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna double check with Kirk and make sure he has internet. Otherwise we may have to end this one. Oh, his computer crashed. Okay. So this is gonna be probably the shortest Mad Men you've ever seen because we had technical difficulties, but for myself, Jason B. Kendrick, I am the Connection Catalyst. You can find me at Jason B. Kendrick. Oh, I'm over there. Where am I? There it is. I got it backwards. It's hard to do that. So, Find me at jasonbkindred.com. I do coach intimacy and connection for men and women. We deal with masculine and feminine dynamics, communication styles, personality types. And we will help you to create a owner's manual or an instruction manual for yourself and for your partner. So you know how to teach somebody to communicate with you. So you know how to be of loving support to your partner. And my man, Kirk M. Samuels, is the intimacy incubator. He does major work in re-educating men about porn and porn addiction and how to become free from porn and how to create healthy relationships in his, in your in their life without the addiction of pornography and, and what that leads to. So he is an amazing individual. He's one of my best friends. He's my brother from another mother. And we're both here to help you guys. So from one madman of masculinity to all of you out there, thank you so much. Thank you for putting up with our technical issues tonight. And thank you for joining us once again. We are going to have some powerful guests coming up soon. So, you know, please pay, please uh, stay tuned. Please like, share. Please send us comments and questions so that we can address the issues that you may have. Thank you, Janine. Janine says she's learning wonderful things from us both. So, and she's grateful. And we're grateful for you, Janine. You've been one of our big supporters for a while. So we thank you so much. But definitely, if you have questions, if you have issues, something you're working on, let us know because as much as we can talk about our stuff, we love talking about your stuff. So from Kirk M. Samuels, I am Jason B. Kendrick. We are the Mad Men of Masculinity. We love you. We're going to sign off early tonight. Thank you so much. Have a great night. We'll see you next time.